Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a process of valuing Fidelity National Stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 43 billion market cap. They're trading at $79 a share and they have 546 million shares outstanding. Fidelity National offers financial services for financial institutions, businesses, and developers. They provide mobile and online banking, fraud risk management, electronic funds transfer, and retirement accounts. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Really nice free cash flow between two and a half and three and a half billion dollars. But look at their margins. 38% in 2021, 32% in the trailing 12 months. They convert a lot of their revenue to free cash flow. Above 20% is really, really good. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statements, revenue minus expenses. That's about 600 million in the trailing 12 months. Margin's not as good, 6%. The reason their free cash flow is so much higher than their net income is due to non-cash items on the income statement, like stock-based compensation or impairments. Revenue is sales for the company, and that grows each year from $9.3 billion to $10 billion. They do pay a decent dividend, 2%, and they could cover that dividend three and a half times with their free cash flow. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value of its all cash flows past year four, that's 51 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $45 billion. We divide that by 546 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 83. They're trading at 79, so they're trading at a 5% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Do you think it's a buy or a sell? Let me know in the comments. There are 59 companies in the same industry as Fidelity, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They spend a good amount of CapEx, almost $1 billion. Their debt to equity ratio is between the median and average. For every dollar of equity, they have 70 cents of debt. They pay a nice dividend, 2%. They generate a good amount of free cash flow, $3.2 billion. But they generate the most free cash flow relative to their market cap. They have the best price to free cash flow ratio. They also have the best price to book, 2.6. They're trading at two and a half times book value. PE is not nearly as good, 74. Same thing with price to revenue, 4.3. They generate 10 billion of revenue, which is half CDW, but cash flow is the most important part of the business, not revenue. Unfortunately, their revenue is not growing as much. Their five-year annual revenue growth rate is only 3%, lower than the median average. Here's their latest income statement, the second quarter of 2024, second quarter of 2023. Revenue is pretty much flat. Cost of revenue is up a little. Gross profit is up about 5% from 900 million to 950 million. SGNA, which includes marketing, 600 million. So operating income, 378 million. They spent 43 million of interest on their debt, a lot lower than last year. Their net income is 240 million compared to 85 million last year. But it looks like they sold off one of their units. Earnings from discontinued operations, negative 6.7 billion. So in future income statements, this part of the business won't be there. But it is this income statement, and that's why they had a big negative. I'm sure if we look through the 10K and 10Q, we can figure out what business unit this is. Here's a better visual. Continuing operations, 240 million. Discontinued, 1 million. So net income, 240 million. Last year, 84 million of net income from continuing operations. Discontinued, negative 6.7 billion. Some companies like to break it apart so you know the loss is due to operations that won't be there in the future. I can't tell from looking at the income statement if they sold off that business unit because it had a big loss. That definitely could be the reason. And they're buying back a lot of shares. Last year, 590 million shares outstanding. Now it's 550 million. So it's about 8 or 9% of their shares were bought back. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 5% discount. I give them a ranking of 7 out of 10. Would I buy them 8 out of 10? Looks really attractive. They have great margins. And even though their revenue is not really growing much, they're still doing a good job at generating a lot of free cash flow. Ratio 7 out of 10 because of the amazing price of free cash flow. Even though their PE is bad, price of free cash flow is the most important thing to look at. 
Financial, six out of 10, it would be higher, but their revenue is not really growing that much, only 7%. Free cash flow actually decline, but it's still a lot of free cash flow for the amount of revenue they generate. And they pay a really nice dividend 2%. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.